right, everyone. Well, we had a really busy day of, of packing today, packing boxes for customers. We uh, sent out about 40 um, boxes today. A lot of orders headed out to Long Island, uh, Westchester County, uh, Fairfield County. We had a order, a couple orders headed to New York City. So it was a good day. We're really, uh, we're happy that we got those out. Um, it's also a little cooler today, so that's exciting. And one less thing to worry about, you know, sending meat in the summer is, is definitely a hard thing to do, but um, we do our best at that. But, you know, today I, I, um, I was thinking about a conversation that I had with, uh, with Greg Judy a couple weeks ago when he was here at our farm. And I asked him a question. I said, Greg, um, is farming to you, is it a business or is it a hobby? And right away he said, you know, it's a business. It's a business because if you don't treat it like a business, you'll end up like a lot of farmers and you'll be out of business and, and you'll be out of your hobby, right? You won't be able to enjoy spending time on the land. So, you know, you got to spend uh, time working on not just the farm, but you got to think about how to pay for this farm and how to power this farm. and. You know, we've shared with everybody here that for us, it's been a, you know, it's been a battle in some ways, but ultimately, you know, we still have to figure out how we're going to get more hay, how we're going to pay for hay. Um, you know, you got to make your money back on, on your tractors, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately the, the money is, is made in putting out great product for us. For some, the money's made in, in seed stock you know, raising great animals and selling them, uh, like selling pigs when they're right off the mother, uh, selling cows at a certain stage or selling whatever animal that you have. But you gotta decide, you know, what your, what your mode is, right? What your, what your income engine is. And I think that's where a lot of people don't spend enough time because the farm takes so much time. The farm takes a ton of time. And, you know, keeping these little guys healthy and growing and fed and making sure that your next crop of uh, piglets that you're producing is there and then you got you know tractors that sometimes need to be fixed and we got a manure spreader over there that needs to be fixed and when you put all that stuff together there's there's time that gets eaten up and you know if if you're not spending the time thinking about how to fund the farm and how to pay for the farm, you can get yourself in trouble, um, you know, pretty quickly. I mean, for me, you know, my background is in sports, but it's also in business. So right away, when we started our farm, we, we asked ourselves one question, what are we gonna do to pay for the farm? And what are we gonna do to generate income for the farm? Because even if you come at this thing with a boatload of money, you'll get eaten alive. That's for sure, because it's expensive. It's a very, very expensive endeavor. And at the end of the day, you got to be on top of your cash flow. You got to be on top of your income all the time uh, or else, you know, you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble and we don't want trouble. We don't like trouble. It's not for us. So, you know, you got to ha have a business model that you're running alongside the farm. For us, we chose a direct to consumer market. Um, and it is expensive to do that. And it has a lot of requirements that go with it. And there's a customer service arm. So if you don't like customer service and working with customers like that, going direct to consumer is not a good option because it requires you to go um, and deal with customers on a day-to-day -day basis. For me, I love it. It's, it's one of my passions, service business and working with people and you know educating them on where their food comes from. And, how we operate the farm and giving tours at the farm and getting people to really enjoy, you know, the farm. But for some, right, if you don't have a passion for that, it's not the right thing to do. So you got to figure out what is it that you love to do as it relates to your farm and then how can you generate, um, you know, the income that you need. I was talking to uh, our driver a couple weeks ago, Jimmy, months ago, and uh, I said, Jimmy, you know, you got your farm, you got to think about, you know, what's your number? What's the number that you need to make from your farm so that you can keep your farm going? 
And you know, when you get that number, it's a good thing because you know exactly where you stand and what and what your number is. You know, some people are working for ten thousand a month, twenty thousand a month, but maybe they only need five to keep the farm going. Whatever it is, you got to know your number and you have to work towards that number. And today, you know, there's opportunities to put tents, Airbnbs. There's a million things that you can do today to generate income to keep your farm going. So the number one way to lose your farm is to go heavily into debt. That's a that's something that that's very easy to do. You need the next piece of equipment. You need the next this, the next that, whatever it may be. And again, you can get yourself in some some pretty big trouble if you're playing that debt game um, because it's not always meant for you to win it. Banks win, whoever collects the interest wins, but uh, there's no guarantee that that you're gonna win. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the business side of, of farming because you gotta have passion to do it and you gotta have love to do it. But if you're not thinking about what your business model is, you can get in trouble. And today's message is, is a bit more for farmers or even those that are thinking about you know, even raising chickens in your backyard. What are you going to do with all those eggs? We, we meet so many customers that come up and say, oh my gosh, we have all these eggs, but um, we don't know what to do with them. Or we're paying to feed these chickens and they're overproducing eggs. Well, get rid of some of your chickens. Get rid of some of your chickens or start selling some of your eggs to your neighbors. Start giving them away. Um, you know, use them to barter, use them for something. But at the end of the day, there's no reason to produce a boatload of eggs if you're not going to use them. That's just silly. You're just paying for feed to feed chickens so you can save $7.50 at the store. But meanwhile, you're paying a lot more than, than $7.50. So you really got to think about it for yourself, what it is you're looking to do, whether you're a backyard farmer, whether you're a big farmer, whether you're a little farmer, whether you're a homesteader, whatever it may be. But you got to know what your plan is, what's your business plan. And if you don't have one, sit down and make one. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it should be something that you think about. Because if you don't, you're eventually gonna have to think about your business from a standpoint of, maybe I have to figure out how to liquidate this thing. How do I get out of this farm? You know, I'm in trouble. How do I work out of it? And you gotta be careful because uh, it can happen very, very quickly with a couple uh, poor decisions. You know, if you have too many animals on your farm, if you're, um, you get too many animals and not enough land, you get too many animals going into the winter and you got to pay for hay. You uh, like breeding, but you're not selling your breeding stock. All of that, or your seed stock, you can get into, into trouble pretty, pretty quickly. So again, I just like to point out the realities to people of, of what this is. And it's, it's great. It's fun, but you can get in trouble pretty quickly if you don't have a plan. So you got to have a plan. You got to be thinking about your plan daily. You got to be executing on your plan daily. Uh, for some people, older equipment is the way to go. For some people, newer equipment's the way to go. One isn't good and one isn't bad. It's what is your plan? What is your business plan? How does it function? And how does it work for you and what it is that you're looking to achieve? Like for us, I didn't want to buy pigs from other farmers. Um, I wanted to raise all of our own. So now we have enough stock and enough sows in production. So we're producing a bunch of pigs. That's what we wanted. That's what we're going to do. Again, we have a direct to consumer business. We have a retail business we're building. Um, so with all that, and then we're also going to probably at some point sell some of our stock as well. So we're, we're firing on direct to consumer, retail, um, wholesale, and then also selling stock so we're hitting on all those cylinders but that's not the plan for everybody so be careful right don't you don't have to copy someone else's plan you got to think about what's the plan for you what's the best plan for you your farm your family and your situation um, you know everybody comes to farming from a different place some people grew up on the farm they inherited their farm yeah they they may not have the same financial stress to pay for the farm as somebody else. Other people have to buy the farm from scratch. They got to start from zero like we did. Um, some people, it's a second career like us. It's a second, it's a second act. So, you know, I was in professional sports. Lauren was in news and we're going at this thing the same way we would go at any professional career with everything that we have and, and we're working hard at it and approaching it 
like a profession, like a career. So um, again, every person's in a different situation. So some people want big farms, some people want small farms. Some people just want, again, a few chickens in the backyard to call themselves a farmer and, and get away from their day to day and spend a little time either in the garden or working with you know some basic livestock. That's cool, whatever you wanna do. But just always remember, there's gotta be a business plan to whatever you wanna do or else you're just burning cash. And burning cash is never a good plan. So just again, something, something to think about. And if, you're, if you get this thing right, regardless again of size of farm, what it is you wanna do, you'll feel really good because it's not costing you. A lot of the stress in life, in farming, in business, it comes when there's a hole in the bottom of your cup. There can't be a hole in the bottom of your cup and you, you just keep pouring into it and all of a sudden, you got nothing in the cup. That's never gonna be good. That's always gonna lead to frustration. So again, even for us, it's, it's just day to day. What are the numbers? Where are we at? How are we doing? Where do we need to improve? Where do we need to cut back? What, what program of breeding do we need to accelerate? Um, do we need to sell stock? I was talking to Greg Judy last night on the phone and he said, guys, I want you to sell a percentage of your cows because going into winter, it's just gonna cost you more for hay. You got some out there that aren't performing, get rid of them now. Don't wait, get rid of them now. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start looking to cull, like I've been saying over the last couple weeks. So again, what's your business plan? How do you monetize your farm? How do you not lose on the farm? And how do you keep yourself afloat in a very positive way? So you can live the lifestyle that you wanna live and the farm is never a burden but it is only a, um, an add to your life and your lifestyle and you get to really enjoy it. So again, simple lesson for today. I just wanted to chat about this. It's something we don't usually talk about or never talk about. We haven't talked about this yet. We usually just talk about the farm and what we got going on, but this is an important one. So anyway, I hope you, you like it. And if you do, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, get some comments down below. We love hearing from all of you. and. Um, again, we're trying to build a nice little farm community here. And uh, again, we hope to hear from you. So again, if you're ever in the area, let us know in advance so we can meet up with you and show you the farm and, uh, you know, get to know you. All right, cool. Have a good day. See you, everybody.